And I, I guess we've mentioned it throughout this entire interview in terms of the process of becoming a doctor. Um, but I guess starting from the beginning and obviously till uh, the CSAT fellowship, what is the process? Uh, if you were to explain it to like a high school student or someone who's interested in medicine in the U.S., uh, what would that process look like? So essentially, if you were in high school, then you go to college and depending on the country, on some years, sort of an intermediate two years and some years, like in the U.S., you have to do the, your four-year initial bachelor's degree. You would have a certain concentration in terms of certain courses and things you would have to take. Then again, depending on which, where you are coming from, you, there are entrance examinations. So, so for the U.S., it's MCAT that you have to take, not like similar to NSAT that you have to take before you enter law school. And then once you pass that and you get like a certain score, then you get admission into medical school. And then after medical school is at the completion of four years, then the next step is then you have to apply for residency. Um, and along the way, so the exams don't end though. You tweak your MCAT, yeah. you go through residency, then you have to take your, the USMLE 1 and 2. And, and now USMLE 1 is just pass fail. USMLE 2 is you still have a score. So it is important to do certainly paths at the very least. And then this process of applying for residency and getting into residency, whatever it is you're interested in doing. Once you're in residency, you still have to take USMLE Part 3. And then once you're finished with residency, then the next step, if you wanted to, do further subspecialty training, then you would go into fellowship. Or for some individuals, that can be the end of the road, at least where training is concerned. And you can go into primary care practice, whether it's pediatrics, internal medicine, family medicine, psychiatry, et cetera. And then different residencies also have different durations of trainings. So within, like, for example, pediatrics is three years, but there are some programs that are four years in training. But you can practice essentially after you finish residency, unless, of course, you want to go on to subspecialty training. So it is definitely, it's a long road for sure. Yeah. And I guess uh, even after finishing all that, like, I think so every year you have to do like a refresh exam or? Yes. Yeah. Obviously, after taking your board exams, now what they have is something called maintenance of certification, no. where before it used to be, it was time limited and m 5 I even forget now, five to seven years, you had to take an exam. Now they've made it a little bit, uh, I guess, depends which way you look at it. You, simple or maybe difficult because then you have to accumulate certain numbers of points. You have to have ongoing CME, or which is continuing medical education by attending lectures or courses or like someone like myself who's in a med school, although I also need ongoing CME, you have to have Continue to do quality improvement activities and also there is test questions that you have to do. They have taken the exam away, at least for us in pediatrics, as long as you continue to do the quizzes that they send us what is it, every quarter and you have to have passing score. So it's different in every specialty, but there's, there's like a process. You, you have to continue with ongoing medical education courses to make sure that your knowledge is up to date. The, and that's important to keep your board certification and obviously then your licensure so you can continue to practice. 